my relationship with God over the past years has been it's always changing, always growing for the better. I think as we grow older, the passion kind of hits us a little harder. It's just like, especially through high school, we're being judged and persecuted and we try new things, we meet new people and sometimes, you know, we fall and we have to learn from Christ and be able to get back up and continue on our journey. My journey in finding Christ started, I'd say, four years ago when I was on my freshman retreat. It, um, it really made a huge impact on my life and the way I live my life. My journey towards Christ began um, on junior retreat. It really got me thinking about what I needed to do and how I needed to live my life. I don't really know what happened, and it might have been like a late effect from my confirmation. I really don't know, but I just had like, um, not a conversion, because I was never like a stranger to God, but I just all of a sudden had felt His love so much deeper inside of me, and um, His presence really became known to me. When I was younger, you know, God was always there. He was always like, in my religion classes, we're talking about Him. But as I started to grow, He's more than that. He can be a friend. He, he's a savior. He's, he's a helper. When I came on retreat, like, everything got serious, and I really wasn't expecting it. So when, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, it, it really hit me hard, and it changed, helped me change my life forever. Just falling in love with Jesus is a feeling that is not compared to anything else. You couldn't compare it to anything. It's a feeling of real happiness, real loyalty, and it's a lot of trust. You're putting trust into God, putting trust into faith, and putting trust into yourself. You know, love, love is a choice, and when we choose to love, you shouldn't expect anything in return. You know, you're loving because you want to, and you know that's what's right. Just thinking about the sacrifice that Christ made for us, dying on the cross, the least we can do is give of ourselves to others. Um, I was talking once with my mom, and she said that you can give a cow an overabundance of grass, but you can never force it to eat it. And that's kind of how our spiritual life is, is that the church can give you so, only so much, but if you don't choose to believe in it and put it into your own day-to-day -day life, it, like, it doesn't mean anything. In a Keith Urban song, it said, no greater gift is man than to lay down his life for us. And we can really learn from that, is God loved us so much that he could give his life for us, and I don't think any of us could really match that. And in every act that we do, offered up to the Lord and that's all he asks of us to love and serve others you know first you have to love God so if you can't love God you can't love anyone so you have to love God then you have to love other people because God wants you to love other people and if you love God then you will love other people and if you love other people then you could learn to love yourself and so once you make that decision to be with him that's when it really counts and we learn a lot about love through the passion I think and we're always taught in theology class that love, there's no match for love when God died for us. I definitely think that the ultimate sign of his love was his crucifixion and um, it's important to take that into our lives and as much love as he gives us we have to outpour it to everyone around us. My role in the stations is the weeping women and I feel like sometimes I'm trying to get to Christ, I'm trying to follow his path but there's things getting in my way and in the end he's just trying to save us and sometimes things that might be in our way are just part of his plan and those are things you have to pray to him and talk to him about and just to get through. I learned from the, the role of Veronica that you have to have courage and you have to step out for your faith and she had a lot of love and I think I learned a lot from that just being able to like wipe the face of Jesus and you know help someone it kind of gives you like a deeper feeling and a deeper a deeper understanding of Veronica in general you know each one of us has a different experience or hasn't had their experience yet but in the long run we're all going to experience something like this or something of this nature that is so beyond us that we can't comprehend it and it's the greatest feeling in the world
I weep for the passion of my Lord Jesus Christ, and I should not be ashamed to go weeping through the whole world for his sake. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I tell you solemnly, one of you shall betray me, one eating with me. Judas, who had betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? You have said so. Take this and eat it. This is my blood, which will be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. Father, everything is possible in you. Take this cup away from me, and let it be your will, and not mine. Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? Ah! Ah! Which of the two would you want me to release to you? Give us Barabbas! Ah! Give us Christ! Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? Back up! Oh, Jesus. Move! 
Get out of the way! Watch out! Move out the way! they have done. Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is finished. Into your hands, I commend my spirit.
you